So here we are, we're back at the bench, and what we're going to focus on is these. They look like uh, cowlings of some sort. Um, no matter how many photographs I look at, they all seem to have these, except this really old postcard. And it's just an ornamental stone on the top. Um, here's another one yet again which shows it even better so that's what we're going to concentrate on now then this is what I'm going to use I have cut a piece of straw 3 mil straw and it's 6 mil in length and I have glued it onto this piece of toothpick uh, which is 14 millimeters uh, 8 or maybe even 10 millimeters of this toothpick will go into the uh, chimney breast stroke um, stone. So this is what I'm going to do. I have just placed this cowling into the chimney, well, into the breast, chimney breast. I'm just pushing on the toothpick rather than the straw just in case I accidentally no it's not, it's not the same height as the other one let's push, push it in a little bit more right just wipe off the glue So that's the two cowlings done. I'll just check, make sure that they are the same height. Eight mil, eight millimeters. I'll do. So what I'm doing now is I'm just drilling some two millimeter holes ready for the chimney. Right, so what I'm going to do here is use toothpicks again and then just pop them into there. Obviously I'll wrap some paper around the toothpicks to make them a little bit thicker. That's the three chimneys put into the chimney breast. Um, more or less done the same as what I've done with these cowlings, except that I've wrapped some uh, paper around a toothpick um, five mil high, just wrapped it around and glued it, and then drilled some holes where you saw that, and then just pushed them in, super glued them in. So that's the chimney, so we'll put that to one side. And now we shall concentrate on making the Saracen's head. Taking seven weeks just to get to this point. Right, so what I've done here, as you can see in this piece of paper, I managed to print off uh, a Saracen's head pub sign and shrink it down as small as I could without losing the actual picture. So as you can see, it's, it's 10 mil across and it's um, roughly uh, 15 mil in height but uh, I haven't used the black lettering otherwise it would have been too big for scale I think so all I've done is just used the head itself and uh, stuck it on a piece of card um, just a standard thin card not uh, one mil thick it's, this is a little bit thinner than that and then what I'm going to do now is make up the the hanger which this is going to be glued to so basically I'm just going to pick that out from there pick that up fold it 90 degrees it's just a uh, standard 0.8 copper wire 
you can pick this up anywhere it's normally on your um, ring main so it's quite thick wire so that's the, the width for hanging so if we do the same for the top about there and then what we'll do I'll fold it at 90 degrees again and then just get a one mil drill bit place it into the corner and then wrap it round it wrap it round it so it comes back on itself without trying to straighten out the fold I've just put in right so we have something like that so what I'll do now is I'll cut the ends of these swirls off and then solder a piece in there to form the brace right I have cut back the radiuses that was on there and then squashed them in and this one I've cut it back but just left a little piece for the hoop so this piece here this face here is where it'll stick the uh, Saracen's head and I've just put some flux on there and it is very sticky this stuff so I'll just put some flux on there hopefully it will stay put right so that there is now ready for the solder now I've only just got to touch this to get the solder to stick just gonna put that where I want it There's a bit too much solder there. Let's see if I can take that off a bit. Yeah, that'll do. Right, and now we have our bracket. We'll let that cool down. And we'll stick it to the Saracen's head, as it were. I thought of myself while I was um, soldering the bracket up and while I've got the soldering iron out I may as well do the last detail um, that's in the photograph which is the handrail right outside the pub so hence that's what I'm doing now final solder joint So the legs are a bit long at the moment, I mean I can cut them down once I've done once I've done this little last joint, there's too much solder in there, I've got to get rid of it. Right, that'll do. Once that's painted up grey, and uh, that'll make a nice little handrail. So now we're going to move on to filling up um, the bar with the bar staff and some more extra punters. Now, I've already made a start at modifying these Backman 
um, scene craft figures. Now, this guy, he would normally have a bag uh, in between uh, his legs. So, as you can see, I've cut that out. And uh, what I'll do is I'll repaint the figure so he's wearing jeans and I'll give him a black jacket so he's like a, a rocker um, from the 60s so he's like uh, yeah so that's what I'll do with him and um, we have his girlfriend here and what I've done on the back of this one I've sliced away at the hoodie and hopefully blend it in with her hair so make her hair longer you can see out there where I've scraped it away so that's them two uh, this figure came out of the seating pack I'm gonna leave him as he is because he looks like uh, uh, Roy Orbison or maybe Buddy Harley <laughs> sorry my imagination is just running wild there and he just popped in to open up his bag and get his music notes out probably and um, that leaves me down to these two figures which I'm going to have sitting um, at the table near the window so we'll probably see these what I'm going to do, I'm going to slice that mobile phone out of her hand because it wouldn't have been around and I'm going to try and roll up uh, a straw um, super glue it to her hand so it looks like it's a glass so it looks like she's having a drink anyway so that's them two and here we have the two barmaids Molly and Polly now Polly I have scraped away at the apron at the top and what I've done there I've put a thin slice right through the waistband so I can cut away here so it looks like she's wearing a blouse and then at that point the skirt starts so I'm just scraping away digging it in where I've already sliced the line and when it's painted it looks like she's wearing a blouse and then the skirt will uh, start from that point down so it's all about uh, trying to make your figures fit in with what you want so uh, did I say this was Molly? yeah I think I did and I've scraped away here as well so what I'll do is I'll paint this pink and it'll look like she's wearing a low cut top so that's what I'm doing there if I can just create a V in there you know where I'm going with this and then just paint that in scrape away the apron and then draw a line down there or scratch a line down there to create like it's a blouse I think that's all I need to do with that just scratch it and hopefully when it's painted it'll highlight highlight that so this is Molly and uh, where she's got her hand sticking out, if if I've got the height right, it'll be just on the pumps on the on the bar. If, we, if I'm lucky, well, we'll see that when we come to do that. So that's Molly, and this is Polly. Well, Polly, I'll do something similar. I'll just scrape away the paint there. and just scratch it and that's it, that's all I need to do with uh, Molly Molly and Polly, yeah so I can't remember which is which but one of these two is Molly and one of these two is Molly Polly right <laughs> so with that done I can get to work painting these and then we can glue the bar into the building because that's that's been the stumbling block all the way along this build so let's cut away the uh, mobile phone 
You don't need that, missus. Right, yeah. Let's just pair that away a little bit more. Hopefully we can get a glass to sit in that groove. Right. Let's have a look at them when they're finished. Now we have a full pub. Um, shall we have a closer look? And here we have the barmaid Molly. Uh, remember this one or this figure had the apron. Uh, this one had the most work done. Um, scraping back the apron strings and repainting the skirt as you can just make out there. It's pink with white polka dots and if you look really really close yep, she's wearing lipstick. Hmm. And uh, yeah, that's where the rest of the punters are in this bar. Now, if we go around to the other bar, you can see the barmaid Polly. Uh, as you can see. And uh, there's that guy that had the bag, and what he's got there, he's, got, he's resting his pint glass on the stool. And uh, that was the girl that had the, the hoodie, so I remember I paid that back, and I've given her a blonde hair. And the rest of the figures were there already. So, yeah. I think we have the scene and uh, yeah I think that is ready to go into the building. Now we move on to the ridge tiles. I have just set the rule up at 2.5 millimeters and 2.5 millimeters this end. So what I'm going to do is just score it. Now that will be for the fold, and then we'll push that in to 6mm, or thereabouts, because you want 2.5 off the centre line, and then we'll do the same here, 2.5 off the centre line, 2.5 off the centre line. Right, and then we just cut that. Now we've done something similar to this um, when we did the um, stone edging, but this time we just fold it first before we, uh, as you can see we've got a nice fold there. And then what we do then, we get our black pen and every four millimeters, I'm just doing it guesstimate at the moment just for quickness and then we just keep doing that all the way along and then once it's done we glue it onto the apex of the roof just like this uh, also it was a bit fiddly getting the bar in as you can see now the bar is in um, I was expecting the uh, piano or something to drop out when I was putting it in, but no, it went together quite well. All that pre-planning for measurements and whatever. You can see the two people at the table there, it looks uh, that's good. So it'll be interesting to see at the end of the video what we can see. But in the meantime, I shall carry on apexing. No, I shall carry on putting the ridge tails in. Now we come to the weathering, uh, probably the best bit uh, I enjoy doing. Um, as you can see here, this has not been weathered and this 
section of the roof has. And um, what I'm using is Citadel um, Earth Shade by uh, Agrax. So it's Citadel Shade Agrax Earth Shade. Try seeing that when you've had a few. <laughs> Might have one or two later actually. <laughs> right, getting back to the seriousness of the build. So that's what I'm using. And as you can see, it highlights the tiles uh, quite well. So all I'm doing is dipping it into the paint, as it were, and then just wiping it off with a cotton bud. Maybe not taking it all off, because you've got to leave a little bit in there to make sure it gets into the... And yeah, and that looks pretty good, I think. So, I'll do that, and then we'll move on to another colour. I'm using this photograph as a guide um, to see if I can try and recreate these textures here and here and also along that uh, plinth along there and I'm using Nullin Oil by Citadel and uh, as you can see it's looking pretty good it's it's not heavy it's quite subtle and, uh, and that's it there Nullin Oil and yet again I'm just picking out various spots on the building um, mainly running down from the upper plinths and just putting it on very very lightly along this edge and then just running down just like that using a drier cotton wood and just round the edges obviously I'll tidy that up a little bit more but you're getting the idea and now I will add some black matte to run along the cornice edges here and then wipe it back and then once that's done I will add some slimy grime dark green um, just to give it that really old weathered look so you just take it back a bit One thing I'm really, really happy about is the way that these capping stones have turned out. Because you can see every single groove that I put into the plastic strip, uh, which is which is really, really um, well pleasing to the eye. Now I've already gone round with some black matte paint, uh, which has highlighted the stones as it were so I'm just going over now with that uh, lime green and getting a q-tip and just rolling it and that just helps yeah I'm quite pleased with the detail there And to finish off, I've just gone over the tiles with a little bit of white powdering just to change the tone of the tiles. See that bit there hasn't been touched yet. So I just go over with a little bit of white powder dust and you'll see the difference.
just gives that a little bit of a sheen. Right. So the next time you'll see this, it'll be open in hours on the layout. So here we are, we're on the layout and uh, looks like the council have been and put in a pavement which is uh, jolly decent of them but um, they forgot to put in this handrail we made earlier. So we're going to have to uh, get them back but I uh, can't wait for them so we might as well do it. So we'll just move that out the way. Um, I'll just use a prodder for prodding the holes before I actually drill them. That makes sure two things, that the drill bit don't wander and it doesn't tear up the card because sometimes drilling into these Medcalf um, paving normally lifts up the card and furs it up and uh, makes a right mess of it so we'll just uh, quickly pop in some holes right so I've put some PVA wood glue in the holes and I've just wiped the excess off so just in case I'm just placing this handrail in situ and hopefully all the holes line up and it'll stay put uh, like so I think I might have to cheat a little bit because uh, I think I might have drilled, drilled the holes in just a little bit too deep put a little bit of super glue there and a little bit of super glue there make sure it's level Got it. Yeah, I might be with that. Well, you can tell the pub's open because the lights are on. So let's just see what we can see in the bar. Can we still see the piano man? Yep, we can. Can we see Molly at the bar? Yes, we can. Just. And there is Polly behind that bar. And all the punters. So yeah. The Saracen's head is definitely open. What we'll do, we'll turn the lights off and see what it looks like in the dark. So here we are in the darkness and it's uh, pretty creepy up here with all the lights on. It's not like the loft is haunted or anything, it's just that, you know, when you look around all you can see is all these little diddy lights. And um, it is quite eerie. That there is the diesel yard. Just barely make it out. Yeah, the camera doesn't do the lighting justice. Uh, when I'm standing here looking around, I can see every shadow, and uh, this camera is not picking up anything like that. So, Saracen's Head it does really light up the street. Um, the five LEDs that are in there. Two on the ground floor, two on the upper floor, and the little lamp highlighting the doorway. And uh, you can see virtually everything that's going on in there. You can see the piano man over there. And the bar 
homemade Molly and Polly. Yep. And looking at that, you can see there's something going on in the building. But if you look over there at the signal box where I've got nothing in it at all, just the cables you can see there going up for the LED. Um, yeah, it does make a difference detailing inside the buildings, even if it's just a little bit. Now, if we move over to Tyndock Station, one of the first builds I did for the layout, you can see in the booking clerk's office that there's a table and The ticket man, or the ticket man there, so just selling the tickets. That's all I did in there. Obviously there's somebody in there buying a ticket on this side. If you look closely, you can see his coat. There you go. Yeah, so it does pay to detail the inside of buildings. Um, I think it's it's worth it. Uh, I think I went a little bit over the top with that one, the Saracen's Head. Just a little bit. A while back I made a bunch of uh, bush shelters for Station Road revamp. And um, I thought while we've got a little bit of time on our hands, we might as well make one for tying dock as well. So here it is. Now we know the footpath that runs along the station wall is quite narrow so I thought that this type of bush shelter would work perfectly um, on that pavement. Um, the dimensions uh, height wise it's all the same so it's all the same height all I've done is I've just made it slightly smaller so you could probably stand about four or five people underneath that and it's all made out of plastic card same as this one was so we shall paint this up similar colours and we shall see what it looks like back at the station Well, I was going to put the uh, bus shelter there, but I think the taxi firms had an agreement with the station master and they've put a sign up, so the bus shelter can't go there, I'm afraid. So I've decided to put it there. And it just so happens that Mrs. Sims is just about to catch her bus. Right, so. Uh, that's where the bus shelter has gone. But meanwhile, over at the Saracen's Head, they're just about to call last orders. So, um, yeah, we're almost coming to the end of this video and the end of this series. But before we do, we'll just have a, a little last look around the pub. Because as you can see, the, the Saracen's Head's got the sign up on the wall there and it looks quite busy so we've come to the end of the video and we've come to the end of the series but I'm going to quickly dash in there and get my pint before they kick us all out so until next time, stay safe everybody and I hope you've enjoyed this series. Thanks for watching now. Bye.